Gavin, are you uh, you getting psyched up for that atmosphere? I guess y'all been kind of practicing yeah. it or kind of trying yeah. to replicate it. I'm pumped. Yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, it's going to be a fun night. Yeah. I'm excited. What have you heard about? Because obviously you guys played there two years ago, but it was yeah, COVID. Yeah, all that yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. What have you heard about Lubbock and what is the challenge of it? Yeah, I got I got friends that go there. <laughs> They've been talking smack to me already. Um, of course, you know I got. Mm. I got friends on that team, coaches on that team who I respect, who I had great relationships with while they were here. Um, so yeah, I mean, we know it's going to be a crazy atmosphere. Like we know Blackout, Pat Mahomes going to be there, all that stuff. Um, but those are just distractions to us, essentially. So, um, you know, we're just going to go out there and play our game. Have you heard about the tortillas? Yeah, I mean, we see it on film. Like we <laughs> see them throwing them on film and stuff. So like I said, another distraction. So we'll be all right. You said you just got to stay locked in, but how, I mean, really, how do you limit those, you know, that outside noise going into a tough? Yeah, I mean, obviously we can't turn off the crowd, um, but like I said, we've been in, we've been in atmospheres before, like BYU, um, you know, Iowa State, um, but we just got to go out there and trust, trust our training, you know, we're bringing energy out here at practice, um, and we know when we go out there, it's only going to be us, you know, everybody else going to be, want to take our heads off. Um, so yeah, so we're just preparing for that. We've got noise um, in practice, especially for the offense, and it's blaring right behind us. Um, so yeah, we're just we're working on that right now. Are there elements of the defense that <coughs> look similar to things that you saw whenever you guys had to go up against, you know, Joey McGuire? Elements of defense, or is it a little bit different? Yeah, I mean, they run a lot of just straight man coverage, um, man covers, a lot of blitzes, a lot of different things. Um, so we're just we're preparing for that. We haven't seen a lot of that this year. Um, maybe one or two teams we played have played um, heavy man, but the rest have been kind of drop eight kind of coverages. So um, yeah, so we're excited. We're up, we're up for the challenge for sure. You guys, you guys obviously played a really good first half against Kansas. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of keep that consistency? Yeah, I think just coming out here and practicing hard every day. You know, these past two games, like it gives. Against West Virginia, you know, we threw the ball for a lot of yards, didn't run it as well as we wanted to. But this past week, we ran it for a lot of yards and didn't throw it as well as we wanted to. So we've just been preaching, putting that together, mm -hmm. that run, pass, um, balance, and I think we can be an extremely dangerous offense. So that's the that's the goal for this week, to just put, put it all together and go out there and perform. So. When you've been rolling in certain aspects, you mentioned Kansas and West Virginia, what are those elements that have been going right for you guys as a unit? Yeah, I think... Like I said, just working in the run game, just perimeter blocking, um, the pass game, just you know, play action, just throwing and catching, just doing our base stuff. I think that's um, we have the right game plans. The coaches are going to put us in the right position. Um, so I think it's just going out there, doing doing what we do, and running our base plays and executing them at a high level. Obviously, it didn't end in a win, but for you individually, that West Virginia game. I mean, how? You know, gratifying was that for you? You know, the culmination of all. I'm sure the work you put in to not only get healthy, but to get up. To yeah. The that you are right now. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was great, but I honestly, I would much rather have gotten the win. Um, you know, so that was obviously extremely disappointing. But um, we got the win. We bounced back. Got the win this past week. Um, so we're just looking to to move forward and keep that momentum going. Coach Aranda talked about how last week's week of practice was one of the best he's seen since he's been at Baylor. Have you guys kind of carried that into this week and sort of maybe made some shifts in energy around here? Or? Yeah, I think, um, like, like Coach said, last week was a great week of practice. Um, so we know what we have to do in practice to achieve that. Um, and I think we've just been preaching that. Started yesterday, thought we had great practice, great energy at practice yesterday. Um, and today I thought we had great energy too. So it's just a matter of stacking those days and being consistent. How much easier is it to work on things that went wrong on the previous Saturday coming out of a win versus coming out of a loss? Yeah, I think there's more optimism, I think, and everybody's like, yes. I think even in the loss, you know, against West Virginia, especially as an offense, you know, we were encouraged by how we played. Um, and there's always, whether you win or lose, there's always good things and there's always bad things. Um, and so I think just being able to identify those, um, to identify the bad even when we win um, and to come out here and work on it and execute it. Um, I think that's extremely important in moving forward throughout the season. So. At what point did you and Blake really get on like, the same page in terms of y'all's connection on the field? Yeah, I think, man, that started 
that started and as soon as we knew Blake was going to be the starter, man, we just kind of, we just started working. Um, when we were back home in Dallas or whatever, we'd link up. Um, so we'd always just, we'd always spend a lot of time together um, just to kind of try to build that connection off the field because we knew that would kind of translate to on the field um, and just getting the extra work, you know, and um, yeah, so it's showing right now. Kevin, uh, Blake's had a few turnovers last couple of games. Is, yeah. is he good about just kind of putting that behind him, erasing it, that kind of thing? Oh, yeah, Blake's, uh, yeah. And I think, you know, we, we preach, you know, especially in the offensive re meeting room, um, there's going to be mistakes. Like guys are going to mess up. That's a part of the game. Um, it's just a matter of rallying together, um, and being a team and coming together and growing stronger in those situations. Um, and I think, you know, when you have guys around you who lift you up and support you, you know, through, through everything, I think it's easier to move on from those things. Um, and, yeah, so Blake, you know, we rally around Blake. Um, no matter what, so did, I think. Did they helps. rally around you? Uh, I'm thinking back to the Oakland State game. Yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. Stuff like that. No, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, obviously, the coaches. Um, obviously, I took a lot of that, you know, to heart. Um, I was pretty disappointed after that game, but you know, like I said, I got great, great teammates and coaches around me, um, and they told me, you know, that they still believed in me. Like they didn't flinch. You know, I just had a bad game. Um, and then came out next week and bounced back. Um, and so that's why I just, I've always um, told myself, just, you know, keep going. There's going to be adversity. There's always going to be things. Um, so just keep going. So, yeah. What's been most impressive to you about some of these young guys, especially the ones who have made an impact, you know, and picked up yards, gotten this year? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a testament to the work that they put in. You know, it's really cool to see um, guys like Richard Reese, um, Hal, Presley, Josh Cameron, Monterey, um, they're all young guys, but they're all, if you see them play, you wouldn't think that. Um, and I think, like I said, that's just a testament to the work that we put in in the off season. Um, even when we just got, got free time, you know, we're always, we're always together. We're always um, hanging out and getting in the work when we can, so. And then one more question, sorry. Uh, Jordan, when Jordan scored that touchdown oh, in the yeah. end round, yeah, yeah. He, he ran, and yeah. Coach Baker, like, I don't know if I've ever seen a guy, like, jump on, jump yeah. on him. Yeah. Like, what, what is y'all's connection like with him, and, and what makes it so special and to the point where he's reacting like that? When yeah, I mean, it's crazy that because a lot of people can see that, you know, like he's just that's my dog. I love Coach Baker so much, man. He's just he's been like a he's been a father figure to me out here um, to all of us, you know, and he's brought this room like this is the closest receiver room I've been a part of and I've been here six years. I've had four different receiver coaches. Um, and so this is by far the closest room I've ever been a part of. And I think it's just a testament to him. You know, he just preaches unity. Um, and yeah, we talk football, but it's, it's more about life with him. And so you can see that when he celebrates with us and stuff that he's genuinely happy for us and he genuinely cares. And it's, it's so easy to play confident for a coach like that. And so I think that's just helped us out a lot. Well, Devin, uh, are y'all kind of bracing yourselves for the atmosphere there at Tech? You know, Patrick Mahomes is gonna be there to be honored and stuff, but what are y'all kind of looking for? Um, where's it? Well, we, we talked about the atmosphere first thing, just everybody getting their heads right, making sure we all came, like, brought our energy because, like, we're all we got. Like, everybody's coming from Waco. There's nobody else. There's just going to be none but just people from Texas Tech at the game and us. So we got to bring our own energy and just get fired up and stay focused and just keep our heads keep our heads down. Have you ever had a tortilla thrown at you before? <laughs> <laughs> and any, they throw tortillas down. Oh, field. I was watching the film and I was wondering what that was flying on the <laughs> field. I thought that was like paper plates or something. No, they like stuff tortillas down. In the they field. actually throw those on the field? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know it was a thing. <laughs> That's interesting. No, I never had a tortilla thrown at me. Well, what do you see from their offense? Um, they're a spread offense, heavy air raid team. They love to pass. They love to um, use number one. That's their main guy who they love to use. They have a pretty good offense. And we got to make sure we just keep things down like it's possible like they're going to try to run the ball they're going to try to beat us on the air and the db's got to step up that's how i see it Devin, how, how rewarding was that because you talked about st trying to stop the run how rewarding was that against this last against kansas just being able to make them one-dimensional like that 
That was a that was really great. That was a really great run performance we had. We haven't had that in a while, and we all talked about it as it like that as a whole as a defense because it's all eleven guys. It's not just D line or DBs. Like if one guy doesn't do their job, that's it. You can't just you can't have one mess up. All eleven have to do their job, and just having everybody execute and do their one eleven is what we call it. It was a it was really awesome to see that. Devin, when there's a possibility that Tech could play three quarterbacks on Saturday, how do you address? what one guy is good at versus another guy and how you kind of have to defend it when you don't know who's going to be under center. Really, <clears throat> the best thing I can say for that is film study. Like, you don't know who's going to be out there, what they're doing until the last second. You see a formation or what guy's out there. You're not going to know what you're getting into unless you watch film and get some sort of experience. And we just got to make sure we're all, like, together watching film, know whose strengths and weaknesses are. Was there a, maybe a message or something that really – was key for you guys and getting that defensive performance that you needed after you know a month or so, a little bit of a struggle on that side of the ball. Yeah, well, I said it earlier, and our message was um, just what Coach Roberts said. He said, "Do your 111." So what that means, like deep down, like for offense, like for offense is like no matter where you play football, you have a mess up, you get another down. Defense, you have one mess up, DB has a bust, that's touchdown. You can't afford to mess up at all. You got to do your 111. All 11 men on the field have to do their job in order for defense to be effective. Right. Oh, it's okay. Is there something about a night game that is more challenging for you guys this year? Or, you know, are you, are you working on anything to prepare for playing at night again? Mm, not really, not really the time of day. More, more so the atmosphere and what the game is to them. It's going to be blackout. Patrick Mahomes is going to be there. Everybody's going to be rowdy, hyped up. And we just got to just stay locked in, stay focused. Everybody has to execute. I know it's going to be tough for the offense because, like, the noise, and you're trying to hear the cadence is just people, like, on your necks yelling. For defense, we just got to make sure we don't let them get any momentum. We got to keep it down. Don't let their tempo go. We just have to keep things under control. Is that a noisemaker we heard walking in from the parking lot? <laughs> yeah, it's a big uh, speaker. It, yeah, how do you guys go about communication knowing that you might not be able to hear each other Saturday night? Well, we got to throw in some hand signals. And the thing for defense, like when their offense is going, they don't really make as much noise the way team. So it's more like easier to hear. It's more so at home, really, it's harder to hear for our games. But we got to make sure we communicate, like probably make it like a cone with our mouths to like get the voice going in their direction. It really helps. What's mm. better, the loud <coughs> home crowd or a, oh, sorry about that. Oh, that wrong way. <laughs> sorry. Um, my bad. It's okay. uh, the, what's uh, better, riling up a, a loud home crowd or silencing a loud away crowd? I'd really say silencing an away crowd. And one memory that brings up from this season is Iowa State. It was initially really loud in the beginning of the game. You could feel the momentum. It was back and forth. And then just defense, like doing what they had to do in offense, taking it away from them. Like you, just, you could see people leaving the game. You didn't hear anything. It felt like practice. I'm like, this is a Tuesday, Tuesday practice. That's what we always say. So yeah, I like away games more, taking the energy away. Devin, uh, Matt Jones has been here a while. He's mm. played a couple of different positions. What, what do you feel like he brings to the defense? I feel like he brings uh, knowledge and experience. Because I remember, I recall him playing the jack, if I'm wrong. He played the jack, he plays the will. And I feel like him being able to like bring the experience and tools that he used from one position to the other is really useful. Because, like, I don't know how to put it. Like, the more versatile players, the more, like, effective they can be. Like, you just, you can, like, know what's coming more. The way Petrie, he used to play linebacker, for example. When he was at Star, he knew what runs was coming. He could just play ahead. Okay. Devin, uh, the way, I mean, for about two and a half quarters, y'all played about as good as you can mm -hmm. play on defense. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to look at film and see where the mistakes were? Are they fixable, that kind of thing? Yeah, the mistakes. Like what they did in the fourth quarter. Really, yeah, the first half, we talked about it. Like, we played really good first half of defense. It's just second half, we got to, like, as a team, we have to play a whole four-quarter game. We can't just play half. We can't play second half because against really good teams, like the team we're about to play, like, this upcoming weekend, you can't just take a half off because we saw last game, we almost got caught up to. We can't afford to have any mistakes like that. And we're looking at that. It's more so just – Getting too comfortable. You can't really get too comfortable with any any lead in any sport, no matter what it is. College pros, you can't get too comfortable to lead. Man, I feel like we just got to keep stepping on their necks and keep going. 